Hello and welcome back to the Rift Guys Wild Rift video. We are back with some patch notes because tomorrow a new patch is dropping because apparently we're in a two-week cycle. So let's get right at it. We have a lot of changes, a lot of interesting updates when it comes to buffs and nerfs and Riot Games is really going to do something crazy once again. So let's take a look at the new patch 5.2a. How's the newly hexified Rift been treating all of you? Personally, it's been a bit chilly for me, so I won't say whose fault it is, though we have a brand new spanking version of ARAM heading your way, as well as some new events to help you explore the new Rift. Along with all of that, your regularly scheduled balance updates as well, so welcome to patch 5.2a. Reminder, content will be released throughout the patch. We have a new feature, the Hextech ARAM. Hexification is heading to the Howling Abyss on August the 9th, which augment will you be picking though? And we have even more events. The Great Drift Challenge, complete missions to earn Hextech badge rewards on and other goodies. Are you a Rift Master or a Rift Legend? The Great Drift Challenge begins on the 1st August. Project A, a Rift study. Compete against other players for your place on the leaderboard. Top ranked players can earn goodies such as Poro Energies, Orange Gemstones and more. Project A, a Rift study begins on the 13th of August. Now let's move over to the hard piece of the patch, the champion changes. Evelyn. Evelyn has been striking fear into the heart of the enemy, so we are tweaking her numbers to make sure she's still manageable as you face off against her in lanes and in the jungle alike. So what are they doing? They're changing the third ability, Whiplash. So what are we seeing here? So we are seeing changes from 3% plus 1.5% of the target's maximum health to 2% on 1% of the target's maximum health. On the Empowered version, this will be reduced from 5 to 2, to 4 to 1.5. Um, so the funny thing about this one is Evelyn, unless fed, doesn't want you regardless. This just makes it harder for Evelyn to kill people who have itemized against her and people who are not weak. Uh, later in the game, Evelyn will still kill you. There's, there's just no way. If Evelyn has ult, you will die. Even with this nerf, you will just, without a question, die. This makes it harder though for people who have more and mercs to die to Evelyn without ult. Which is a good change. Uh, this barely affects Evelyn players, this mostly affects people who don't know their damage on Evelyn, so don't worry about this. It's a, it's like, whenever I see enough to Evelyn, I'm very happy about this, but it doesn't change too much. But the next thing is a very interesting thing by Riot Games, and we're talking about Vi. Vi has not been performing up to par, especially in the early game. These changes will make sure she packs a punch. So first off, Vi players. Did you know that if you start with your first ability in the jungle, you actually clear faster? And your jungle clear is one of the fastest in the entire game, and as well as your skirmish potential? So if so, how are you constantly underperforming on this champion when the champion isn't even bad? So what is Riot going to do to your champion right now as well? Well, 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 we have buffs to three separate abilities starting with a passive Denting Blows. The damage is being increased from 4 plus level scaling plus bonus AD to 4 plus a higher level scale, so that's a 50% buff per level plus the attack damage scaling of the maximum health. So Vi does even more damage now. What, does, what do they do on top? They're, they're decreasing the cooldown of her first ability by one second. This might not look much, but even through the first clear, it's already a lot because it's your best tool for the clear. It does more than your third ability, finally enough. And since it's a mobility spell and all of your items currently in Wild Rift have all ability aced, you'll be able to spam this one, meaning you will have infinite mobility similar to an Ezreal. And since your champion has a lot of damage and shielding thanks to the newly buffed second ability, you are quite the bruiser and quite the skirmisher. So what are they doing on top? They're even buffing a third ability, Excessive Force. What are they doing? They're increasing the base damage by plus 10 on level 1 for no reason. So Vi got buffed on three separate abilities, solidifying her ranking in the tier list to S+. Like, if I, if I would differentiate between S+, S and S-, minus, she's S+, plus now. Riot just really dropped the ball and yeah, they, I don't know what they're trying to do. And funnily enough, they're also buffing um, Kha'Zix at the same time. And Vi is infamous for completely stomping Kha'Zix. So what are they doing to Kha'Zix? Kha'Zix, our resident Void Reaver, is known for his ability to pop unsuspecting victims who are faring alone. We are making sure his signature move can do exactly that. So hold up. 
We are actually debating that Kha'Zix doesn't have enough single target damage. Really, Kha'Zix doesn't have enough single target damage. So, can you guys please share your experiences while facing a Kha'Zix alone, even if he's behind? If he has one item and you have two items and you just face him alone, what happens? If you're not itemized against the Kha'Zix it is. So what are they doing? They're buffing the base damage of his first ability by 10 on level 1. They're also increasing the cooldown refund of the first ability when you evolve it. So during the first clear, since the isolation damage of Kha'Zix is doubled, you gain 20 damage on your Q on every monster. Which means your jungle clear has been gotten significantly faster since you gain 20 damage per Q during the early game. For absolutely no reason. Interesting. Next up is a change to Talon. Talon is the man of the hour and he can do it all, but it's making it unfair for everyone else, so we are bringing him back down to earth. So what are they doing? Spare no one his second ability. The outgoing damage is being reduced from 50 to 35, and the bonus attack damage is not being touched. The returning damage is being changed from 50 to 60. So the outgoing damage is removed, like is lowered, but the returning damage is increased. So you're getting punished less for being hit by the first portion, but the damage you're losing basically comes back on the returning portion. Uh, portion. So what are they doing again? Assassin's Path, cool, of vaulting over the same terrain, blah, 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 blah. It's being increased from 110 to 135, so it's a decrease for mobility. This mainly tackles mid lane talon, if anything, because in jungle, in case many people do not know this, okay? I've seen many talent players do this completely wrong after the changes to the champion over the course of the patch. So, people in jungle for some reason still start W, like second ability. However, you don't do this anymore. You start with your first ability, Q. On level 2, you skill W, and on level 3, you skill Q again. You max Q. You completely max Q in jungle, completely, because your second ability doesn't do anything. And for one-shots in jungle, you don't need W, because for Talon, if you get into the game, your one-shot combo is ulting from like from Narnia into max range Q. You one-shot. You just one-shot. That's the funny part. You actually just kill, because you have the perfect combo, and you proc your bleed and the enemy just dies. All you need to have is sudden impact, like for the runes you need sudden impact, the pen rune, you need pen boots, and you need Yuma's Ghost Blade. And in runes you just have Bloodline, so you have to sustain. So if anything, this is a nerf for the mid lane Talon, not for jungle Talon, but yeah, it doesn't really do too much in, from my perspective, uh, since it's only the uh, outgoing damage is again changed, but yeah, it's, uh, it makes Talon quote unquote harder to play, when in fact it doesn't even have to do anything with his primary combo. Misfortune! Misfortune is lagging behind, especially noticeable as the game progresses. We're increasing her damage and making sure she's speedy enough to dodge whatever her enemies throw at her. So again, uh, the Misfortune rework was one of the biggest failures in Wild Rift because she's actually still substantially weaker and still best played if AP. The current AD version of Misfortune is completely worthless in the game compared to a previous points in the game where Love Tip was still only damage, like flat only damage per target and reset once you swap the target. So what are they doing? Um, they are increasing the damage. This is a slight decrease of a flat value, but they're increasing the scaling per level. But the issue is you still have to fully stack this, so you need three instances of damage or three hits to get the stacked. So this is a mainly an ult buff for Misfortune and nothing else. Her ult was already good enough, so it doesn't really change anything about the champion's power level outside of her ultimate. Because yeah, um, your champion just doesn't do damage anymore, I hate to break it to you. And with the crit change again, like we are losing uh, rune items, this champion has gotten a lot weaker as well, because she was so dependent on these rune items, these crit, these crit numbers, the felty crit, that she just can't keep up, like she just doesn't have a place right now. Another change is coming to a second ability, uh, we see the full speed value being increased, full level 25 to increase to up to 45. And full movement speed increase is also from 80, 80 is still the same, but 95 to 110, so she's more mobile on the map. So she does more damage, but the damage she's buffed in isn't really relevant, because it doesn't matter towards how she's played. Um, as I said earlier, this only buffs her ultimate damage or the objective damage. 
doesn't really do too much for other fighting, and the passive damage, like the passive movement speed of the second ability is nice, but again, it's not game breaking due to the weakness or the lackluster of the other abilities of Misfortune. Samira. Samira hasn't been keeping up with her opponents. We're increasing her opportunities for damage with these changes to make sure she can catch up. Mm hmm. Yeah, the typical Samira issue. We buff, we nerf, we buff, we nerf, we buff, we nerf. Because we can't balance this champion, because this champion, champion can't be balanced for solo queue since it's a dual queue champion. Samira hasn't been keeping up with her opponents, so for some reason they're increasing her opportunities. So what are they doing? Blade Wars second ability 26 to 22, and on highest level from 18 5 to 16. Normally, like you, max this ability lasts, so uh, for one point of investment, you already get a four second buff. So, on level three, you have a four second buff to that ability, which is huge. Uh, the school on this ability is still way too high anyway, it should be lower regardless, because look at Fiora pass it, like look at Fiora W. <laughs> this is crazy. But yeah, still a good change for that one, because this was way too long for a mobile game. And Inferno Trigger, which is the ultimate, the damage of each shot is being increased on the second rank of the spell and the third rank of the spell by five and then ultimately by 10. So what's the problem with Samira? It's simply her damage output and how fast she does it. Yes, with the removal of rune items, her damage dropped a tiny bit, but the issue is the damage she deals is so fast and hits so many people that she's still a fundamentally broken champion if paired up with proper supports into a proper draft. She has also very high base stats, which allow her to just jump on you and kill you. So with all that in mind, this champion is not weak and it's more of a... Um, Pick you should not just blind pick, but understand what you sh should pick her into. Zed. Zed is struggling to deal with enemy carries. That is not true. He kills enemy carries, he struggles with tanks. We've tweaked his damage to make sure he remains a threat to worry about. Razor Shuriken. What are changing? They're increasing the scaling to 110 bonus AD. Damage to enemies in the path, the increase is happening to the bonus AD scaling, and the Shadow Slash, the damage increase is happening to the bonus AD scaling. So, what does this do? On face value, this doesn't look like much. Because, yeah, you are getting a 10% bonus AD scaling. So, first off, Let's talk about the problem that Zed players are facing. They're all going Eclipse. That's the very first problem. They are denying their snowball by going Eclipse. Now the problem with this one, let's say you have pen boots that is 10 pen. Let's say you sun impact that is 13 pen. And now let's say you don't go for Eclipse and you go for Yomus as 15 pen. Let's say you go for Eclipse, you gain 5 AD. You gain a pitiful amount of percentage damage that against Squishy Champions doesn't matter, but you lose 15 pen. And losing 15 pen on your champion, considering the amount of physical damage sources that apply to an enemy, like for example multiple shurikens, multiple E's, your ultimate in general as a pop, your auto attack, all of this all comes to mind. So that player is actually losing a lot of damage by going Eclipse over going first item Yumus, for example. Now the next thing um, about this interesting scaling thing is that it only really matters for multiple shurikens and multiple spells that are hitting. Because if you hit three shurikens, that's 30% more bonus damage. If you hit two uh, shadow thingies or three shadow thingies, it's up to 15. So you have up to 45% more bonus AD. Now, what does bonus AD do for you? Let's say you have one item, you hit the perfect combo, the perfect combo, okay? Of triple shuriken that all hit the same target, with uh, triple uh, triple E. However, this is possible, okay? And let's say you have one item. 55. Plus the boots. So you, let's say you have 85. That is not even... That is not even 30.2.5 damage. And this is the perfect scenario. So this buff isn't actually as huge as you might believe it is from my perspective. What I believe they should do to Zed, they should change scaling of his spells to total AD, but lower it, of course. And then retweak the champion in general, because he is a better jungler than he is a mid laner. 
But in mid lane, he's pretty good against meta champions like Arelli and Soul. Like he can't, like A Soul can't survive against Zed. It's not possible. But yeah, uh, Zed is struggling, so buffing him is most definitely the right thing. Blitzcrank. What are you supposed to do when you miss your hook? Nothing, because you pick Blitzcrank. Now with a low mana cost, hook again. But that doesn't change the main problem, because your hook cooldown is too goddamn long. So what are they doing? They're increasing the base attack damage per level from 1.7 to 2, and the rocket grabs mana consumption from 100 to 80. Yeah, but you kind of need to lower the cooldown of Blitzcrank, because... His only play is hooking, unless he has access to run at you with his second ability and then his third ability. Other than this, the champion is really lackluster, and I, I think if I remember correctly, it doesn't even re like he doesn't even remove shields with R, which would also be a great change if they implement this in World Rift, because yeah, it's actually quite the big difference maker depending on what champion you're facing. Irelia. Irelia has been falling off in late stage team fights. We want to make sure her blades are striking true, especially during key moments like fighting for objectives. They're giving her more armor, 0.6 per level, and they're giving her ult 25 more damage on rank 2 and 50 more damage on the highest rank. I don't really know. Uh, does, does this also a blade wall damage? Does this apply on the initial impact and the blade wall? Or just on one? Because I don't... I don't know if both instances have the same damage, because then it's a lot more damage than it's written here. Or if it's only at the, like, uh, if you know what I mean, like this, the Aurelia blades are like here, and there's damage when this thing impacts you, like the, the, the projectile hits you, and then if you walk through it again. Or maybe I'm just completely lost and uh, just yapping, who knows. Um, but yeah, Aurelia, teamfight buff, Aurelia is either fat or behind, and depending on her being able to flank your backline, she wants your backline, or she just doesn't do anything. Uh, don't think Aurelia needed a buff. I think she's just much more of a mid laner than she is a top laner, because she can actually kill mid laners reliably compared to other uh, top laners in the meta. Nautilus. Nautilus has been a torrent to deal with when stacking mage items. We're tweaking his ratios to ensure his anchor is not dealing massive damage. What are they doing? First ability, Dredge Line loses 10% ability power, and the Depth Charge is gaining 10 second cooldown. That is the support nerf, most definitely. And the damage to the main target is being reduced by 10% of the ability power. Um, so, quick rundown. This doesn't change anything about the fact that if you are squishy and don't have magic resist, Nautilus will one-shot you. He will one-shot you. You will die 100 to 0. No questions asked, you will just die. However, this is a massive change to people who have mercs and or Morrigan because he loses 20% of the ratio. He loses 20% ratio, which if you have these items makes a big difference, but without them you still get one shot. So this is targeting mostly Nautilus jungle um, with a slight tap on the risk for the Nautilus support because he gains cooldown on ultimate ability. Hecarim. Hecarim has been able to gallop in and out of enemies with little consequence. These changes will ensure that players have more options to consider when they're choosing to engage. Rampage. Movement speed bonus on hit is being reduced from 40 to 30. The damage increase for the next Rampage is 125 to 120. So since Hecarim scales with bonus movement speed and his damage as well, this is a decent nerf. And this is also a decent nerf, which I like. The only issue is Hecarim itself is not the most powerful pick, but the issue is his kit, uh, his kit in solo queue is broken, so you'll always face a Hecarim that is fed. That is one of the main problems. So while I believe that Hecarim isn't the most broken champion, he is still a very broken champion for solo queue. And these nerves are good because it kills Hecarim more and more. He isn't dead, but it just, you know, it's just, you slap someone, you keep on slapping them, eventually they'll be like, please stop. And maybe at some point we'll reach the point where Hecarim isn't is annoying champion anymore, but for solo queue I don't think we'll ever do so because of his kit. But yeah, Olaf, uh, like everyone that just face tanks him is very happy about this. Lucian. Lucian is lagging behind his fellow marksmen, but making sure you can keep up with the rest of the pack. Light Slinger passive damage of the second bullet is being increased from 55 on level 6 to 57.5, and on level 11 it's 65 from 60. So quick little info about Lucian. Um, in the past we had the Infinity Edge Rush or um, BF Sword into Solari Rush on Lucian. 
Now we go back to Sudden Impact and Dustblade. If you don't go Sudden Impact, Dustblade on Lucian, you're probably playing the champion wrong. Or um, you just don't know how to itemize into specific scenarios because there's two builds as of right now. There's this uh, Dustblade and Sudden Impact build and the on-hit version. The on-hit version is against super tanks where the Dustblade wouldn't do anything for you, but the on-hit version would allow you to survive. There's also secret interaction with Runans on uh, Lucian because your passive is actually procced on Runans balls, so you actually apply on-hit effects on uh, your passive auto attacks to multiple people because your passive auto attack triggers runons. So if you auto attack an enemy once into your spell, into double auto attack, uh, the enemy will be hit three times with the runons balls because of your first attack and then of the passive. So in a quick combo where you have multiple hits of your passive, this stacks up quite highly and depending on how many uh, on hit items you have, you deal quite a lot of damage to a lot of people. Even later on, um, when you when you have crit, Runes is a very broken item for you because um, if you hit multiple people, if you get close enough to actually utilize Runes, and even crit because your bolts can crit, will increase the damage by so much. Uh, it's just an unused interaction that people were not aware of. Javan, we are buffing Javan late game damage while also granting him more mobility to effectively engage in team fights. Oh my, he gains 5 AD per level, brother. What is going on? And the Massian standard. Uh, the cooldown is being reduced. Now it gains a level advantage. You actually gain something from leveling it also outside of the attack speed bonus. Um, this makes Jarvan a lot better in the jungle. You can play the one-shot lethality Jarvan. You can play the support of Jarvan with uh, Triforce, uh, oh, sorry, with Divine and uh, Sunder Sky. You can also play the support Jarvan in a support role. This makes him a lot better in this regard. So he is becoming a better champion, but he's still not like S plus 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 tier, but he's still a very good pickup for champions. Or champion. Gameplay changes, TX Mecha, again a buff for TX Mecha as it seems, cool 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 because it's still undertuned. We're optimizing TX Mecha's abilities, making sure it deals more damage and enough damage. We're also improving its maneuverability. Missile Blitz slows nearby enemies by 20%. TX can use other abilities and basic attacks during casting this one. Iron Hill Sweep. Knocks back and stuns? Hello? And the laser is uh, slowing them by 0.5 seconds. And since the laser goes through everything, you hit everything in a line. Mm, that's pretty broken, no? Hextech Baron Nasher. Hextech Baron Nasher has been shredding through enemies. We're adjusting his damage. Yeah, this is when you, when you started this one, when you started Baron. This is a good change because it had really a lot of damage compared to the older Baron. Hextech Gorilla Turret. The Hextech Gorilla Turret has felt underwhelming when it's spending all its energy walking around. We're making sure it's locked onto the enemy turrets. Mechanism adjustment. Hextech Gorilla Turret will immediately stop consuming energy when the target turret is destroyed. Hextech Gorilla Turret does not consume energy when moving and attacking minions. Interesting change. Hextech Mimic. We're optimizing the time it takes to activate the Hextech Mimics to make your overall experience a lot smoother. Mechanism adjustment. Increase the radius of pickup of Hextech Mimic behind the turret. The trigger range of mini mimics increased from 8 to 9. Making it easier to use, yeah. Uh, miss the old Herald. Hextech Toolkit. We're optimizing the duration and effects of some tools. We're also removing some that have been haven't been hitting I haven't been hard hitting as we hope. My god, this is so difficult. Mechanism adjustment. Duration of the Hextech Toolkit in lane. 50 to 30 seconds. Active time duration of props owned. 45 to 65. The acceleration rate. Slow damage. Damage 80 from 820. Increasing with champion level. And remove these puppets. I think, like, what the hell did they even do? Like, I always saw them, but they didn't do anything. Item changes. Rift Maker. The, uh, we're adjusting the numbers on Rift Maker to make sure it's a viable pickup as a sustained item. From 12% on UM to 30% on UM, but the damage increase is reduced from 3% to 2.5%. So this is a straight up nerf. This is not an adjustment. This is a straight up nerf. You don't care about 1% uh, Omni Vamp production because you will be losing 1.5% damage. You lose 1.5% true damage, which is a lot compared to 1% Omnivamp. This is a straight up nerf, don't let Riot fool you. Makes the item worse, still a good pickup because it's broken within its own design. 
because it scales off pre-mitigation damage. If they want to fix the item, they have to make the true damage scale of the post-mitigation uh, damage, and then it's a lot weaker. So the 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 um the Omnivamp component is a lot better then. Landry's Torment. Landry's Torment is providing a great deal of damage, makes it overpowered when compared to other major items. You're adjusting its early game power. You never built this item early game outside of Brand, Timo, Lilia. I think that's it, because this item sucks early game. I don't know what this is about. Damage abilities on powered attacks deal 0.5 down to 0.4 with scaling ability power of the enemy's maximum health as bonus magic damage each second over four second over three seconds. So you see, this part here. Like the more items you gain, the more powerful Leandris becomes. The exception are damage over time champions such as Timo, um, Brand and obviously Lilia, because their passives constantly reapply Leandres. So it's actually not targeting the item itself, it's targeting these champions building this item. Because, yeah, Timo, I think it's 4 second poison, so it's 7 second Leandres. Perfect brand combo is 10 seconds of Leandres. Lilia is, I think, also 7 seconds of Leandres, which obviously is not the idea when this item is in the game and it obviously only becomes worse uh but yeah this change doesn't change anything about these item pickups it will still become an increasingly more powerful item later and you definitely want to pick it up especially like super late as a mage like if you have ludens here like this is ludens and super late game you would replace ludens with leandres because it's just so much more because then leandres does like i think 13 to 14% of your maximum HP bar, and then people have so much HP that it's just more potent. Blade of the Ruin King. After the Ruination patch, Blade of the Ruin King hasn't providing enough attack damage, so we are improving on its offering to make sure it remains an attractive pickup. The attack damage is increased from 20 to 25. This is very good for on it choices. Uh, the item itself was very weak compared to before. Makes it a lot better, so I think it's a good buff, especially with AD carries struggling with AD values and just dealing enough damage. Um, again, we look at the items on AD carry. Let me do this again. So we have like one, two, three, four, five, six. If you face tanks at later points, you want to have a Blade of the Ruined King. Because with Hearthsteel they have like five to 6,000 HP or something, and then the Onnit of Blade of the Ruined King will deal more damage than any other item, so giving it more AD, making it more attractive is definitely a good choice, because this item is definitely underbuilt in late game on AD carries into high health targets. Rune changes. Keystone, a King Comet. We're increasing the damage of a King Comet based on sex. I don't know, a King Comet was good already on good ch on champions. It was good on, it was really, really good. There was no alternative anymore. So what are they doing? So why are they buffing it? Uh, the damage is increased by actually stacks gain more value. This is not making it broken, but at least it makes it more satisfying to play this rune because one per stack felt, like, feels weird. But two feels like it feels more satisfying without making the rune too broken, but I don't think that this damage, that this rune needed any damage buff. However, the next rune definitely needed damage buffs, and here we have Coup de Grasse. Compared to the other precision runes, Coup de Grasse is not hitting quite the same. We are buffing its damage to make it an attractive pickup when considering the options on the precision. Deal 7%, deal 8%, worthless rune. Uh, go Giant Slayer every game, don't care about this. It's worthless, worthless, absolutely worthless. If you play 100 games and you just AFK Autolog Giant Slayer on 100, you might have one game where you could have just built, where you could have just gone coup de grasse, maybe. But yeah, Giant Slayer is just too broken. It has immediate value for every five, for every 50 bonus HP the enemy has, you gain one, you gain one percent damage starting with 100 percent HP. Supports gain HP passively just through support item. Every other class also gains health somewhat. So in most instances, the moment an enemy has, for example, 250 health, which is very easy to achieve, it's 5% damage increase on already 100% HP. So compared to 8% when they're below 40%, it's worthless. So yeah, this rune is worthless. They could remove this rune and nobody would care. Update hacks and cheats. Our anti-cheat chest. Uh, our anti-cheat system is constantly evolving to ensure fairness in play. While cheating in Wild Rift, it's relatively rare. The impact it has on play experience can be profound. Absolutely, I've reported plenty, but they haven't been banned. We've banned around 1,300 cheaters last week, with another 3,000 coming up this week. If you believe your account has been compromised, please play, uh, contact player support. Very good. 
they all need to be banned. Hilo was unplayable, unbearable, and annoying because uh, these people run around so much and too much because they're boosting and it's really annoying that they play with boost accounts in duo. So yeah, they play with one hacker and yeah, they just run around and gain LP. And they still lose, by the way. It's the funniest part. I really hope this is true, so let's see how this holds true. Good thing though, and we have one skin, Debonair Jazz. Debonair, Debonair Jace. Extra bits, fix the bug, where at the end of the laser of Hex your Grotor, can attack minions, fix the bug. A wrong model of Hex tech mimic may appear when entering the bush while it's in turrets, fix the bug, blah 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 blah. Okay, but where is Sundered Sky Bug? Where is my double healing bug? Hello, where is my double healing change? Even my cat is meowing in the background, because this is just, hello, I hope it's fixed. If I log in tomorrow and it's not fixed, I'm gonna be furious. And yeah, uh, in case you don't know about this one, Sunder Sky has a unique bug for ranged champions and sometimes melee champions that it heals you twice. So if you hit two people, the first goes on cooldown, the second goes on cooldown, but normally you should be healed for one instance and for another instance. But you get healed two times, four times. So for some reason, you gain double the healing effect, so this item is really broken as a first item pickup on Draven. Because you can't die anymore. So unless this is fixed, most broken item in the game, so please fix it. And yeah, we're at the end of the video. Leave a like, comment for the algorithm, like the video, make sure it helps the algorithm. And we'll see you for more content very soon. Till as soon as well. Bye bye. Take care, ladies and gentlemen.